Hi everybody, this is David from La Borgata Winery and Distillery. We're a small private family owned winery and distillery off Pleasance Valley Road in Vacaville. And we have a small place, but we think it's beautiful, so we like to show it off. One of the things that we do here is plain air painting. And plain air is just a fancy way of saying painting outside. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you what we do for our painting classes. We're, um, our painting classes are for beginners, but if you have experience and you just want to um, kind of refresh your skills, learn something different from somebody else, that's great. You're welcome to join us. Also, if you just want to paint on our property, you're welcome to do that. But make sure you give us a call and you schedule a day and a time in advance. So we've had a few classes here already. Um, I do our classes with my friend Christina Young. And Christina is a Napa artist. She is from, uh, she studied uh, fine art painting and she's also a muralist. So she helps us do the classes here on the property. Today I'm gonna to show you some basic things about plein air to give you an idea of what we have here on the property and kind of what we do during the class. Before we get started though, I just wanted to show you some of the artwork that some of the students or um, participants have done in the past. And they come with different skill levels. Some have painted before and some just painted for the very first time at our classes. And I think any time you take a class, an art class, you get a different perspective because everybody approaches things in a different way and you learn something new and different every time. Now what we do for our plein air classes, <clears throat> we start with a, well first of all, let me tell you what we do throughout the day. So our full day class, we have a morning reception and we have uh, refreshments available. We, we make sure that we, there's plenty of water here. And we also break for lunch and we have box lunches catered from La Borgata Deli in downtown Vacaville. And that's kind of the break in the middle of the day. And then we continue to paint a little bit more and then we end with a uh, wine, cheese, and fruit reception to wrap things up. So it's a fun day. It's a fun day to relax, be outside, and just enjoy yourself. To start things off for the class, we, do, we talk about paints and talk about colors, color mixing, because when you're out painting in the field, you, you don't have your whole selection of paints that you would have if you were painting in an art studio. So you do a lot of color mixing. And what we use here is the Windsor Newton. Uh, this is oil-based paint, oil paint, but it's also water mixable, so it's water soluble. And um, we like that because it's just easier and it's very easy for beginners to to mix and um, it's easier to use water and to what we do is and the whole idea of doing this is to get an idea how colors mix how the paint feels how it works and and also to, to practice and the and the brushes also um, feel a little different too depending on what you're used to so we'll give you a like a swatch of color for you to try to match. And I'm gonna do a little bit of that here just to, just to demonstrate. So what we have here on this palette paper, we have the, the blue is an, a French ultramarine. The red here is a alizarin crimson, and the red is a cadmium red hue this kind of dark brown black color is a burnt umber we have white and then we have cadmium yellow and then we have this bright yellow which is a lemon yellow and notice 
uh, the, the paint that we have here, nothing, we don't have anything in black. And that's because you really don't see black in nature. So anything dark we're going to get from the colors that we have here. So the first thing we're going to do is, is try to match this color. And I'm thinking first that it might be a green. Now we have, I mean, it's obviously a green, but we have a green in the tube. But you'll notice though, if we just use this green, it's not the same green that we have here in our color sample. <clears throat> Let me show you. So get your uh, paintbrush wet first, and then you can kind of get the paint color on the paper. And you see that's totally different. The, what we have here looks a lot more yellow. What, we ha what I just painted here looks like it has a lot of blues in it. And you don't have to know a lot about colors. I'm gonna mix some of the, um, the cadmium yellow in and see what happens. So that's getting a little, now notice I said this looked a little bit more yellow, so we're getting a little bit more of the yellow colors. And I'm gonna use these. We have brushes and um, mixing tools for you to use. So you don't have to bring anything to take a class here. We have, a, we have everything from paints to um, the easels. All you need to do is just show up. So here we have, so I've mixed in some more of the yellow. And here we're getting a little, actually, I think I did pretty good there. That's pretty good. I think I could add a little more dark to it. Now, it sounds weird, but I'm going to add a little bit of this red color and to see what happens. So when you mix the, blue, the green and the red, they're complementary colors. I'm going to mix, kind of get a little bit more on here. You can get it to get a little darker, or it, sometimes if you mix too many colors together, they can kind of get a little gray. But here we go. So I added the red. And intuitively, you might not have thought of putting the red together, but look, look what happened there. I think that looks pretty, pretty close. So we could play with it a little bit more. But we're going to stop here, just because this just gives you an idea of what we do. We want to give you an opportunity to play with the paints, to see what they feel like and then do that before you're out in the field and you can um, remember the things that you did before we went out there. Okay, there you go. Not bad, I think I did pretty good. All right, so we're gonna leave that there for now. The next thing that we do in our class is we take a walk around the property. There's a lot of interesting spots that you could paint so we're going to walk around and most people like to stick around the house because there's a lot of different features that they can focus on. Um, but then also where we're located here, if you turn away from the house, we have a lot of hills and a lot of landscape that you could paint. So you have a variety here to choose from. Before we scout around and look to see where we're going to paint, I want to show you our easels that we use here. So we have enough easels for six to eight people and the easels, these are plain air easels, so they're designed to be portable. And there's a lot on the market. So th these are probably more on the more traditional side. They're made out of wood and they have a, a strap so you can just carry them around. And they also have a handle here. And I'm going to set it up for you just so you can see how it's done. So it, it doesn't take much.
Now, obviously you wouldn't do this and then carry it around. You'd get to the spot that you're going to paint in and then you'd set yourself up. And we do all of this for you, but I, I wanted to give you a quick demonstration. Now, many, many years ago, carrying paint around wasn't very easy, and artists had to mix their own colors. But then there was the invention of the metal tube where the paint, then the paint became portable, and that's when people started to go out and paint in the countryside. So something like this was very handy and convenient. And what you have here is a, a drawer as a palette. You can store your paints and things in here. Just gonna put that there now and let me get a canvas. There you go. You're ready to go. You're ready to paint. There are a lot of different places to paint on our property. A lot of people like to paint up near the house. What we're going to do is we're just going to walk around the property and see some different things. The thing about painting in plain air, there might be a scene that you think is just perfect, but then like something's in there that you don't want. You just don't paint it in there. So you can paint things into your scene, you can um, take things out of your scene. So you can do whatever you want. On our property here we have some dirt roads. We have wood piles that are interesting. A lot of people like to go down into the vineyard and paint in there. And you can see right now they're a little far away, but our goats are up on the hill looking at us. If they're closer, those are fun. They'd be a fun thing to paint. And what I have here with me in my hand here, it's uh, a little frame. And you use this when you're painting, so you can use it for perspective. But you could also use it when you're walking around. If you think uh, an area is interesting and you're not sure, you can kind of stop and kind of see what you could frame in. And if you don't use something like this, if you're just kind of looking out into the world, it, everything is so big and not interesting. But as soon as you put a frame around it, you can focus on some different areas. And then all of a sudden, what wasn't interesting is becomes interesting. Here we're stopping at the vineyard and we're looking in and if, if you wanted to paint in here you could go in and get a little closer. And the vineyard has, let's look at through the kind of the viewfinder here. So you can you can focus on different things and kind of see what you might be interested in. And I was talking about maybe having things that aren't, that are in view that you don't want in view. Just don't paint it in. And this is looking out away from our house. We have a beautiful view of Putnam Peak. This is the walkway back up toward our house. So let's come up this way. Anything that has twists and turns can potentially be an interesting painting. And 
Also, the interesting thing about painting, doing plein air painting, is the, the light. And the light changes depending on the time of day. And the light and the shadow make the, interest, make the uh, painting more dramatic and interesting. So this is up around the house. We have some garden areas. We have a lawn. And Jerry's father, Donato, he made these balusters by hand. So every baluster that you see here is handmade by Jerry's dad. We have a lot of areas that are shady that are really relaxing to paint in. And you might recognize this view here, this fountain, which is in some of the paintings that you saw on the, the table. Okay, so we're gonna go this way because I picked a spot to show you some painting basics today. So follow me this way. Here we are, we have everything set up here. My plan today is to paint Putnam Peak. Um, I like the detail of the, the bridge here and the, the um, well, I don't know what you call them now, but the, um, the columns that come up and the curve of the concrete in the road. So I kind of I kind of like that. I don't know if I like so much of the bushes there, but I can play with that a little bit. And then there's a tree on the side, and then there's a lot of beautiful sky. So let's see what I can do. I could, if I wanted to, because we have a pond here, uh, which is also a beautiful thing to see because there's uh, the cattails and there's water and there's a lot of reflection on the water. So, um, but I think I'm going to go with the Putnam Peak, and maybe I'll do the pond on another day. When you're outside painting, you want to make sure you take care of yourself. So you want to wear a hat. Uh, we, um, we can set you up with a, an umbrella if you want to, but you have to be careful with the umbrella because it could cast like a color through the fabric of the umbrella. Um, it's probably not a good idea to wear sunglasses because that does the same thing. It kind of changes your perspective, your color perspective. Um, my glasses do that automatically, um, so I just have to live with it. So let's take a look here. So I have palette, and we'll come around to make sure that you're stocked up with your, all your paints and everything that you need. And if you want to just quietly paint by yourself and relax, then, then you can do that. We'll come and check on you. And if you want some advice or some instruction, then we make our rounds and make, to make sure that we get all your questions answered. Okay, so let's, let me get set up here. Just want to make sure the canvas doesn't move in case the wind picks up, so let me fix that. And let me show you my brushes real quick. So I have a, a big brush to get some color on the canvas. I have, I'm probably gonna use this one a lot to kind of get some of the, the shapes in. And then I have some smaller brushes to get some of the finer details. And then I have a fan brush in case I wanna add some like different textures and, and other details using that. Um, 
So we have a wide selection of brushes that you can use. These are the ones I'm just going to use right now. <clears throat> we have water here for you, so you're going to use your water. First you want to get your brush soaked a little bit, not too much. Okay, and now we have a selection of paints here. The first thing you want to do is add colors to your canvas because what you're going to have that's going to come back from behind the colors here is just the white. So let's get the color that you see out here mostly is going to be kind of a kind of a brownish, light brownish yellow color. It's a nice time of year to paint because you have a lot of contrasts. It's easy to see the the trees and the brush in the hills and if you were here like in the early spring like in uh, March and April everything is green so it's a different look it's beautiful so we invite you to come any time of year I'm changing my mind for a second I'm, what I'd like to do is, first of all, do a little bit of the, um, get, a, get a little bit of the sky in there. So I'm mixing, I'm going to get some color down on the canvas. So I'm going to mix in And the water helps dilute the paint a little bit too. So I'm just going to add color to my canvas. Hold everything, hold everything. You can't come to a winery and not enjoy some refreshments. I mean, come on. <laughs> so I have some Thank water you. for you to drink and some wine too. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you very much. That's on it. I don't recommend <laughs> drinking the wine during the painting, Why but not? there's plenty of wine after. Why not? Oops! <laughs> Add some color to it, you know? Oh, thank you very That's much. That's really good, Dave. It looks like a, um, I want to say it looks like, um, it looks like waking up paper. in the morning. <laughs> dirty paper. No, it looks great. Good. Okay, so you have Thank you water, for the water, and yeah. Then, so I'll put that right there. Or would you like the wine? You need to have a little sip of wine. Okay. Yeah. All right. A little wine never hurts. You're at a winery. It's our red wine blend. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Oh, that's really good. It might help me paint better. See? I knew it would. Yeah. All okay. right. Thank I'll you. Just, uh, I'll just set it. Where am I going to set this? <clears throat> All right. So I'm still adding color to my canvas here. I'm just going to add a little bit more of the kind of a blue to the top. And I'm not adding any any details right now. I'm just getting color down on the canvas. And the thing about plein air painting is that it's, it's quick because you really have only a certain amount of time to paint. Because of the light, you might want to be capturing the light at a certain time of day. And the thing about playing, or being outside painting too, you're inspired by just the, the peacefulness. You are also maybe inspired by the, the smells in the air, the sound of the, the wildlife. I feel like it's kind of dark on the top, so I am going to add a little bit more 
of the lighter colors up there. And you, it's okay to make mistakes when you're painting. You will be able to go back and fix things. Like if I really didn't like something, then I could get my rag. And then you could just kind of wipe some areas off. So the paint is a lot more forgiving than you might think it is. Okay. So there you go. I could go a little bit darker, I guess, if I wanted, but... So now you have kind of a background happening. And I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna get a little more daring with this. So I'm gonna block in a little more, a little more. Now let me remind myself of what I'm looking at. Let's see, I'll remind myself of what I'm looking at here. So I want to make sure I have sky and I want to get some land in there. There, oops, my paper's bending. There's a formula, real simple. It's um, break your canvas up into thirds. Um, but again, I'm just getting, I'm just adding some kind of color. got a little windy here. Yeah, I think I'm just going to stay basic today. Let's see, what can I add here at the base? We have the road. It doesn't look like much now, but that's okay. Because when you do planar painting, you do, you block the shapes in first and you do a lot of looking at shapes. You might want to squint your eyes sometimes a little bit too. Kind of just, just so you see the shapes and, and you get your eyes away from the details. And then you go in and you add more layers and more details. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna play with the sky a little bit. And see how I'm mixing with just the, the paint on the brush? It doesn't have to be perfectly blended. 
So I'm gonna add the sky in. There's not much as far as clouds today. What I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to start to get um, to work on the hills now. Um, and the grass and the hills and the rocks are kind of a... There is some kind of yellowy color in the grasses, but I don't want to go there yet. Trying to get a color that doesn't look like there's cream in my coffee. So I'm mixing colors here to get something that I like and I can start using. The yellow is not really working. I'm going to add a little bit of this brighter red in here and see if that does something for me. You know, my background is, well, I studied jewelry and metalworking in college. So I'm more of a sculptural, uh, I'm more of a 
tactile, hands-on, sculpture type of person. I think the paint mixing, though, is is fun part because I get to manipulate the materials a little bit. I'm afraid of this yellow, but I'm going to try some of it. It's just so bright. And that's the nice thing about uh, doing oil paints, is that you do have time to to mess around with your with your mixing, especially if you're not quick with your painting. I'm not a I'm not quick. Now oh, that's a little bit better. Okay, so I messed around with it enough for my taste. So let's see what we have here now. So I'm not looking for exact detail, just shapes. Kind of go with your feeling. Before you know it, you've spent hours painting. And sometimes it gets to the point where it's more about the experience of just relaxing than it is anything else. Don't feel like you have to rush to do any of this, because the more you rush, the less you're going to kind of get a feel for the painting. Okay guys, so you can see where I'm at right now. It's still kind of in that middle stage. And so I'm gonna now spend a lot of time putting more details in. Personally, I'm not one of those painters that can whip something out in like 20 minutes, half an hour. So I'd like to go back and fine tune it at this point here. Um, and this is that awkward stage where a lot of people say, oh my gosh, it's not working out, but just spend a little bit more time on it. Um, and you start to, you're starting to see things kind of shaping up and kind of where things are going. So those fine details are going to make a difference later. Thanks for coming today. And maybe you can join us for some painting in the future. <laughs>